Hey, in this Compliance Gate video tutorial, I will introduce you to clothing and textiles regulations in the US. All right, so I will cover everything from chemicals and heavy metals regulations to Consumer Product and Safety Improvement Act, the CPSIA, which specifically covers um, children's clothing, labeling requirements, and also clothing lab testing. Well, let's start with chemicals and heavy metals. Now, in the US, there are two sets of regulations. You've got state-level regulations and also federal regulations administered by the CPSC. And first, in this video, I'm not going to cover every single state regulation. I'm going to stick to CA Prop 65, which, as you probably figured out by now, is, is, is only relevant if you either in California or selling to consumers in California. There are a few different other requirements and exemptions and so on, which I will not focus on in this video. But um, to get to the point, California Prop 65 is basically a framework setting limits on more than 800 different substances that may, well not all of them, but some of them may actually be found in, in, in fabrics such as lead, cadmium, mercury, formaldehyde and so on. And a good thing is that as an importer, for example, if you're an exporter, you plan to start selling in the US, then you don't actually have to keep track of every single substance. Instead, you tell your testing company that, hey, I'm, I'm going to sell you know this and that in, in California, and I want you to test my product according to CA Prop 65. So it's actually a lot easier to deal with. Uh, back in the day, you actually had to keep track of every single substance yourself. Well, that was a long time ago, before the age of Alibaba and Amazon and so on. Right, then we have the F Flammable Fabrics Act, FFA. D this one is different. This is on this is a federal level regulation, so it's not just specifically to California. Um, this is uh, the FFA only applies to certain fabric weights, so it doesn't apply to every single uh, well f product, every single type of apparel, but. If your uh, f if the fabric weight falls within a specific uh, range, and and this is actually very light fabrics, I can't remember exactly, but I think it's less than 100 grams per square meter or something like that. Or if it falls within a specific category, such as wedding dresses, then you need to comply with with the FFA. And then we also have the FHSA, the Federal Hazardous uh, Substances Act. Uh, this one is not a well, textile regulation in, 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 in any sense, really, but it sets certain limits on sub substances that may still be found in textiles. Formaldehyde is one of them, okay? So it's actually quite fragmented in the US. You have state level regulations administered uh, and enforced by the CPSD. And then you have state level regulations, uh, and in this video I only cover one. Now, one thing you can do is to reach out to uh, OECO Text Channel 100. Uh, it's a Swiss-based organization, and what they do is that they have their own frameworks that cover, well, sort of the whole world, okay? So you don't have to make your own assessment. They cover EU regulations, they cover US, at least federal level regulations, and I also believe that they also cover state level regulations. So that could actually be a shortcut. And many manufacturers in Asia and, and fabric producers are also familiar with this. Because end of the day, from your perspective, be or it doesn't matter if you're a brand, if you're an importer, a wholesaler, you want to ensure compliance, this means that you have to communicate to the manufacturer, or at least to your fabric supplier, that they need to comply with, for example, CE Prop 65, the FFA, or you can also merge at least these two into Ecotech Standard 100. Okay, so that's an option. Could be a good option. Uh, all right, number two, we have children's clothing, which is... is regulated by the CPSIA and this is not specifically for children's clothing but toys, children's products, anything sold uh, and marketed as appropriate for children aged 12 years or younger and well it's quite it's it's, it's very strict but it's it's also a very uh, straightforward and well 
and defined framework. The problem with, you know, for non shielded products is they can be quite tricky to figure out which regulations apply, what, what lab tests they need to get. But with the CPSIA, it's actually very straightforward. So the first thing you need to do is to assess which ASDM standards apply to your specific product, okay? And that could be ASTM F963, for example. It's sort of a broad standard that applies to many, sh well, pretty much all children's products, and it does also set limits uh, uh, on, on certain substances, uh, heavy metals uh, in particular, okay? But it also covers safety aspects in terms of physical properties and so on, buttons and and drawstrings etc so that's the first step now n number two you need to also create a cpsia tracking label don't worry all this information is available on the cpsc dot gov website and you can also find information for free on compliance gate dot com slash guides um, but that's the second thing you need number three you need a children's product certificate and yeah that's something you issue yourself basically it's a statement saying this product SKU like like you know ABC one two three whatever you want to call it is compliant with this and this ASTM standard this is the CPSAA label we uh, children's clothing LLC and this and that address is, is the importer and this is our contact details so you basically you use a template once again you find this information on uh, um, the CPSC website of course completely free because it's a government agency so you just fill out a template you print it and, and, and you just sign it so it's pretty straightforward but that's number three and number four you also need to get your products lab tested okay so these are the four steps uh, in CPSIA so we're pretty straightforward and this applies to children's clothing 12 years or younger all right, number three, we have labeling requirements. And now we moved on from CPSIA. So if you're actually, if you're importing children's products, keep in mind that this CPSIA tracking label, it is uh, something you have to comply with in addition to the general labeling requirements that apply to all products. So in the US, you have to comply and, and as I said, this is not just for children's products, but every single, uh, every single textile product. Well, pretty much every single textile product, especially apparel, has to carry a label, a permanent label, that details the fiber composition. And this could, for example, be 100% cotton, 98% polyester, 2% spandex, for example. Of course, it has to be accurate. You also have to specify the manufacturer or the seller identity. Okay, so if you're manufacturing overseas, it doesn't have to be your Alibaba supplier. Uh, you can specify your name, uh, your brand name, for example. Country of origin is mandatory in the US, for example, made in Vietnam, made in Bangladesh, or, well, if <laughs> God forbid these days, made in China, uh, or made in the US, if that's the case. But, you know, that's that means that it actually has to be manufactured in the US and not just relabeled in the US. You get a lot of questions about that. But country of origin, that's not just for textiles, but it applies to pretty much every single consumer product uh, sold in the United States. Another thing that applies specifically to care, um, well, textiles labeling in the States is care instructions, that written care instructions covering, you know, washing procedures, drying, and so on. Or you can use ASTM care symbols you can't just you you can't for example use the european versions the iso versions it has to be the astm variant okay and guess what you find out on the astm website all right english language uh the label has to be in, in, in english language you can add other languages spanish etc on the label as a complement to the to, to to the english language version of the label but it has to be present, okay? And as I said, it has to be permanent, so a sticker is not enough, and it has to be on the product, on the piece itself, okay? So permanent, that could be a nylon patch, as you see on the left here, or it could be printed directly on the fabric. It's something we see more and more printed on the inside uh, neck area of, of the fabric, T-shirt, for example, okay? But it has to be permanent. Okay, number four, we have... We have textiles, lab testing. And the purpose of lab testing is to verify if the material, well, in this case, the, the fabric is compliant with the regulations that apply to the product. So that could be CA Prop 65, substances regulated within uh, FHSA. And as far as I know, that's only for maldehyde. Could be a couple of heavy metals. 
um, yeah, um, you find that on the CPSC uh, gov website. So you better you better verify that because I don't keep every single sub chemical and heavy metal in, in in my head. So you have to double check that the FFA and also ASTM standards in case uh, you need to comply with CPSIA, which you do if it's a children's product. Okay. That said, you know it's actually it's it's in most cases uh, is actually optional. If, as long as it's not a product covered by the CPSIA. But this is compliance gate, so I would be an idiot if I didn't advise you to get your product lab tested, okay? There are scenarios in which your products could actually be subject to a recall if it turns out that they contain excessive amounts of certain substances. Uh, I know, for example, that the US Customs, they, they have heavy metals uh, uh, scanners, uh, and even though I, I don't, I don't think that T-shirts is like the top of the list. I think they have uh, more uh, pressing matters, such as checking lithium batteries and uh, I don't know nukes and uh, biological weapons coming through the borders. But but you know there is a risk uh, that they may actually check your inbound shipment of apparel and say, hey, this contains excessive amounts of you know this and that heavy metal. Uh, and lab testing is the only way to verify that, and that's why lab testing should be done before the goods depart from, well, if you manufacture them, you know, overseas, say, Vietnam or China, okay? But it's actually, it's actually optional. But the thing is that compliance is, by definition, mandatory. And there are situations in which, you know, the authorities could be checking, or more likely, actually, Amazon. They are getting really strict now on compliance, and they can also set their own requirements, not to mention retailers. If you want to sell B2B, you want to sell to be the local store or maybe you want to sell to a large retailer it's very likely that they will ask you for some sort of chemicals or heavy metal test report so that's one more reason why you should get your products tested it's not free though you're looking at about a hundred per fabric and also color so let's summarize this now number one you have to confirm which regulations or substances well, substance restrictions and labeling requirements that apply to your product, okay? And that's been detailed uh, to some extent in this video, at least the basics. Step two, you need to create your textiles label files. Keep in mind, if you're manufacturing your products overseas, don't expect much support from your supplier. You have to create the label files and then send that to your supplier as a PDF or a uh, Adobe Illustrator file. And you know what they do is they they what you see is what you get. Uh, they just print the file. They will not verify that it's compliant with you know or Texas regulations or something like that. So you may have to be sure that you know whatever you send them has to be accurate. It has to be correct and compliant. And number three. Depending on the product, depending on where you plan to sell it, depending on the age group, sh you may also need to get your products lab tested. And something I didn't mention is that the lab test should be accredited by the CPSC. That includes Intertech, Chima, Bureau of Veritas, SGS, and many others. Got questions? You can just reach out to us. We'll give you a recommendation. Okay, FAQ. A couple of questions we get on 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 US textiles compliance so why not why not uh, answer them in this video so I'm importing products from overseas am I or the response am I responsible for ensuring compliance or well is the supplier responsible the thing is that compliance enforcement is is always domestic in the sense that if you import a product that is not correctly labeled if you sell a product that is non-compliant with certain chemicals chemical regulations then the authorities will not bother to go after your supplier in Ho Chi Minh City or in 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 uh, Shanghai they will go after you okay meaning that they could issue a recall or they could 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 fine you for selling a non-compliant product of course it's a very big difference if you are selling a product that is incorrectly incorrectly labeled or if it's a you know baby clothing that's just uh, well dangerous uh, for 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 the baby um, I wish I could express that in a better way but I, I, th I think I think you got my point there's a big difference but end of the day you're the one that stands to lose money 
if you import and sell a non-compliant product so it's up to you as the importer to implement you know this compliance procedure which is not that difficult at least not for textiles and I already I got a bit I got ahead of myself uh, but as I said you're the one that will cover the lab testing cost the supplier will not subsidize the testing cost they will not they will not uh, pay it in part or in full it's up to you to cover the lab testing cost when you manufacture products overseas then it's like you know it's like flying with a low cost airline I'm actually not sure if you have that in the US but but yeah here in Asia there's, there's a few of them and of course Ryanair in Europe and and what they have in common is that there's n no frills not, not no extras included the same thing with contract manufacturing in 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 be that in China or Europe or in Mexico or even within the US um, they will not pay for lab testing okay like the supplier the, the, the factory never pays the lab testing cost because end of the day you're the brand owner you're the one that rakes in the profits and and they don't so you have to cover the lab testing costs which also leads me to the next question because as I mentioned the testing costs are actually based on the number of materials and and in the textiles industry this means is that it's set on the number of fabrics and colors okay so you've got five polyester fabrics each well okay let's let's say like this you have one polyester fabric in five colors you got one cotton fabric in five colors you got actually 10 different SKUs. okay so if the testing costs on average a hundred a hundred US dollars per variation that's a hundred times ten as a thousand okay so the only way to really reduce your lab testing cost other than just saying okay um, I'm not gonna do the testing I'm not gonna test every single fabric uh, and color is to reduce the number of fabrics and colors and I know that may not be an option uh, because this is a in a way it's a you know creative industry and and uh, it's sad if you have to limit <laughs> that uh, you know procedure or limit your stuff the creative process based on you know lab testing costs but you know that's that's um, uh, that's the way it is sometimes so instead of using 10 fabrics uh, all in different colors you may want to reduce that to maybe five different uh, five different fabric sorry five different colors same fabric for example right how do you create a label file well when it comes to file formats, there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, you can use Photoshop, you can use Adobe Illustrator, uh, you could even use Paint, it doesn't really matter, it's not going to look very good, but you can. What matters is that you send a accurate representation, uh, not just in terms of the content on, on the label file, but also in terms of dimensions, layout, font, size, whatever, because what you send to the supply is what they will print, okay? So you better get it right, and they will not double check for you. Okay, they're not compliance experts, uh, unless they are with, unless they are U.S.-based factories. Then it's different. So yeah, maybe even in Mexico, they they might be might 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 be able to take that walk that extra mile and actually verify that for you. But if you manufacture clothing in 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 Asia, in Europe, don't take that for granted. Assume that they 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 don't have a clue how how textiles should be labeled in the U.S. because in many cases they don't. Now, if you don't have access to these programs, uh, if you don't want to buy a license, or if you don't know how to use them, then you can find a graphics designer on Fiverr Upwork. Pretty straightforward. But, as I said, Fiverr freelancers are not compliance experts, so you still need to make sure that you give them the content, be that in a Word file or TXT file or whatever. But they can do the design work for you. All right. Now, what can happen if you import non-compliant products? Well, as I said, uh, I always tend to get ahead of myself in these videos. Compliance is an extremely exciting uh, topic, as you all know. Um, a bit sarcastic. Anyway, um, now the point the point I made earlier in this video is is that it really depends on the non-compliance. Okay, uh, if it's if it's okay, you missed. You specified it as 97% cotton, while it was actually 96%, okay? Um, that's fine. No one's going to check that. But if you're importing, say, children's products and you don't have a CPSC, uh, you don't have a test report. Well, you know the the, the the U.S. Customs they can they can seize they can destroy the CPSC. They have the right to to um, 
test your products or issue a recall if a consumer would ever report you for example if they have suspicion for any reason and they also do active market surveillance meaning they can go and they can buy your products online uh, for the purpose of you know statistics but also to to verify if your product is compliant or not but what's most likely well let's say like this when it comes to non-compliance most people these days well most businesses get caught by none other than Jeff Bezos himself or well Amazon to be specific they are really getting strict these days and we're getting so many emails from uh, not just American uh, American sellers but also European Asian and Australian ones that, that are selling um, on Amazon in the US saying hey I'm I'm not even allowed to list this product because I don't have a test report or a CP uh, children's product certificate and yeah, that's really the new front line in, in the world of compliance. And, and, and that's that's also where we see a lot of growth in, in our business, to be honest. Because the thing is that the authorities, the government, they don't have the resources to verify compliance and, and check every single inbound shipment. But Amazon is strict and they are effective and they will become even more strict in the future. So if you import and sell a non-compliant product, at best, you're looking at you know, getting your, li your, your, list, uh, your listing on Amazon rejected. But if it's something worse than that, you're looking at major fines and, 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 and uh, yeah, possibly even persecution. So the stakes are high, even for something basic, basic such as textiles and especially children's products. So if you want help with uh, the compliance procedure, you can actually go and go to compliancegate.com slash help and fill out this form. We need to know a bit about your products, the product category, what sort of assistance you need, the target market, the US for example, if you're an Amazon seller where your products are manufactured, and your details, and we will get back to you with a compliance action plan free of charge and a cost overview. So if you want to know how we can help you to implement compliance into your business, well product compliance that is, then go to compliancegate.com slash help and we'll get back to you within one day.